Greetings, friends. You are on the Military Reports channel. And today we will discuss with you the situation in Ukraine on the 3rd of May, 2024th year. A lot of things have happened today, so let's get started. We will start with you from the Kherson direction, where the armed forces of the Russian Federation continued to carry out fire damage on the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine. In the area of the settlement of Kizomova with Beregovaya, Yan Tarnaya, Sofievka, and others. In other words, we have already discussed this with you, by the way, this direction has already been, let's say, in a certain focus of attention for the last few days after Sirsky announced that, say, Ukrainian troops managed to establish full control over the island of Nostriga. After that, the Russian army concentrated its focus on this area as much as possible. Perhaps in the course of reconnaissance activities, it was possible to identify a cluster of USU fighters. And now they are simply being worked out. But in general, we see with you that despite some possibly bravura statements there on the internet, in a telegram, about what well, what can happen and so on and so forth. We can see from the number of strikes that the Russian army has recently been inflicting in this direction, that the Ministry of Defense and the General Staff took this information quite seriously. In other words, we can definitely conclude that the Russian leadership does not want a repeat of, say, in the area of these islands, including to the south in the area of settlements for Baron, Staraya, Soborovka, and so on, and other settlements that diverge on the Russian side of the Kherson region. It is extremely undesirable to see a repeat of the situation that took place in the markets. Because, well, this will already be quite a serious blow to the reputation, including that there is no way to stabilize the situation. And in addition to striking with fabs and other heavy weapons, missiles, the Russian our army has already connected, even lancets, for counterbattery warfare. All these frames, all those geolocations speak not only about one thing. The APU is gradually accumulating reserves in this direction. And based on these plots of these videos, the picture that you and I can observe, we can conclude with you, with a fairly high degree of probability that the armed forces of Ukraine really plans to continue, let's say, amphibious operations. A series of amphibious operations, the purpose of which is to establish control over all the islands. Not only those that are in the gray zone, but also those that are, let's say, under the control of the armed forces of the Russian Federation. Control over the islands will definitely allow Ukrainians to strike, land troops in populated areas as Vinogradnaya, Ribolchaya, Zabarin, Staraya Sprovka, Novaya Sprovka, and so on and so forth. At the same time, it is worth paying attention to the renewed attempts of the armed forces of Ukraine to attack Russian positions, both in Cossack camps and in Ky. For example, Footage of the Afu fighters trying to swim to the K market began to be published again. No matter how the blows are struck, the boat sinks, but mostly the troops manage to land. The place was relocated, there was an attempt to land here, that is, to the markets again. And based on more and more geolocations that come with the direction, we can say with confidence that for sure there is a new bridgehead in the area of the settlement to the market, somewhere in the Kosta camps. So far, its scale is unclear, the list number, the number of personnel, what is in general in the armament, what is controlled, are unclear. But it seems that a fairly serious bridgehead is already under control in the forest. While all this is being hushed up, smoothed out, trying not to publish, or treats it so, you know, negligently, they say. But what could be there, right? But the footage says exactly the opposite. Of interesting things, it is worth noting that the APU is very, let's say, effectively and massively using drones. It is enough to increase the number of updates from the 1st of April, and we will see with you how tightly FB works in the forest with drones, buckets of light, as in Cossack camps, as in the settlement to the markets and further to Korsunka, and further after Korsunka, let's say, Novo Kokhovka. In other words, there are hundreds, hundreds of drones, and the question arises, for what reason? The Russian army does not use the same tactics to strike at the positions of the Afu in Tijinka and Ivanovka. It's much cheaper, perhaps even more efficient, and more spot-on. The Russian army, in turn, prefers to carry out strikes exclusively with 
and either strike there, let's say, with heavy artillery, or strike with the use of aviation bombs. But put it on too. But despite all this, interesting shots were published today, very rare, perhaps the rarest shots. As the armed forces of the Russian Federation flew drones in the Tijinka area, dropped bombs on the soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine, who did not expect this situation. In other words, these are probably the first shots for maybe half a year. Well, give or take, they're at the level of statistical error. About some drone strikes and flights of Russian and drones over the Ukrainian bank of the Dnieper River. That is, it is definitely not worth relaxing here. It is not worth thinking and doing Shapkozaka de Telstvo here. Based on what we see, there is an extremely high probability that the armed forces of Ukraine will undertake serious offensive operations here in the near future. And perhaps they will begin exactly at the moment when the Russian army launches and begins to conduct a sanitary operation to create a sanitary zone in the Kharkiv region. And when the main resources, reserves, forces will be directed to the Kharkiv direction, FABs, aviation, lancets, scalpels, iskanders, shahids, everything, 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 where they will be to fly to Kharkiv. Since this is the millionth city, you can't take it there with two brigades, yes. Here it is necessary to carry out a serious operation, and all resources will definitely be directed here. In other words, there is an extremely high probability that some kind of vigilance will weaken. The overall potentials and capabilities of the Russian army in the Kherson direction will weaken. It is at this moment that the USU is trying to attack. Well, let's watch. In any case, all situations will develop extremely interestingly. Then we are moving with you to the Nareski bridgehead, the great Novoselovka. The armed forces of the Russian Federation continue the offensive operation and according to the incoming information. According to data firm individual cartographers, who, well, more or less, we can say, reliable. The soldiers of the armed forces of the Russian Federation managed to establish full control over the farms. That is, there are literally a couple of barracks there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight barracks. And perhaps there are a dozen, two dozen left under the control of the Apu. While in residential development, according to the latest geolocations, the fighters have not yet entered the Russian Federation. But only the processing of positions with the use of RBC-500 aerial bombs is going on, the 250. 500, one and a half thousand people arrive. But in any case, the direction is being prepared. Preparing for further assault actions. And it is very important here, today we will discuss this new topic, let's say it. Let's say this direction, this is the idea that, for example, today, today is a very interesting day. Will probably be remembered by many, and well, let's say there is some important event there. But basically there was a very terrible scandal today, and there is, in fact, a very terrible scandal between Ocinters. Geocinters, well, that is, all those who are engaged in exploration. This is exactly the kind of intelligence that you see today, let's say, in front of the screen in a video. In other words, this is when exploration is carried out on the basis of data, after which the data is plotted on the map. Certain conclusions are drawn based on the information received about the received geolocations. Where, what, how, where, why and why, yes. And today there was a very terrible scandal, it is still happening, because until this moment, until today, let's say, the number. There was always a small gap between what is really geolocated by personnel. Where exactly is a soldier soldier of the Ukrainian armed forces, where is a soldier of the Russian army? And those informations say sources from the place, yes. That is, sources from the place, there is one information, it is always slightly ahead of the information that is geolocated. Since there is varnish, and on the basis of this, there was a terrible scandal, but I will not give you the details of this situation. But when we get to a certain point, you will understand what I mean. Then we are moving with you to the South Donetsk direction. Today, the armed forces of the Russian Federation have undertaken a number of offensive operations in the direction of the settlement of Konstantinovka from the south, as well as Poroskovevka from the north. It is difficult to say when exactly these offensive measures were carried out, it is possible, perhaps a day, perhaps two ago. In these frames, we are with you, let's say, the armor that is storming along Proskoveka under artillery strikes by Viso drones. A little more closely, we see the stronghold of the stronghold, the landing of troops, the cleaning of dugouts, and, let's say, fixing on the ground. Today, 
the 79th Airborne Brigade has published a lot of information in its official Telegram channel, which has been reporting for several days in a row. Literally, if it's interesting to see, there's a whole creativity in this brigade, it's interesting to read. Let's say they write for three days in a row that there is no water, no supplies, they are not carrying anything, the situation is bad. Everything is terrible. There are no cartridges, no shells. And when will there be reinforcements? That is, well, that is, it goes on there for three or four days, well, tears, tears, and about what is happening, and why it is so bad. Today, the posts of the 79th Brigade are published that the armed forces of the Russian Federation have gone on the offensive. And such. Such an interesting postscript. From somewhere, they managed to find out that we have a bad supply situation, and today yes. So you yourself said that everything is bad in your telegram channel in the official one, well, as if everyone is reading everyone else. And today the Russian army is already going on the offensive. And according to the incoming information, and according to the information coming from the 79th Brigade, the Russian army is moving at the main pace to Route 0524 and, of course, to the next point of the next Route 0524 north in the Victory area. That is here. That is, it is the cutting that is going on, and it is the 79th Brigade that the fighters express their fears. That in the case of physical control over the cutting of routes 0524, the end of the coal mine comes instantly automatically. Since it will be very difficult to fight there further, and it will just be a doomed whole story. Then we are moving with you to the Krasnogorsk direction, where the assault operations continue. Although at the moment the assault actions of the last few days have acquired a positional character. Let's just say that the Russian army has come close to a refractory plant to high-rise buildings in the east. And it is still difficult to move further. Now it is coming from close distances of dagger strikes. Let's say towers are being demolished, communications are being demolished. Positions are being processed from closer distances, but preparations are underway. Of the important things, it is worth paying attention to the artillery strikes on. Artillery strikes on artillery, on positions, stick out precisely in the fields between this jubilee stakes, say. The southern part of Krasnogorovka, Marienka, Georgievka, yes. Strikes are being carried out here, and we have not received any shots from this direction for a long time, and in general. Based on these shots, we can make it out that a certain focus has begun again. But in general, it is logical. In general, this is logical. It is extremely inconvenient for the VSO to defend this direction, because everything practically passes. All supplies go directly near the main, let's say, positions of the Russian army, so there is an extremely high probability that due to the fall of the southern part of Krasnogorskovka. And, let's say, with the further advance of the Russian army in Georgievka at the moment, in these fields, they are cut off from such, say, stable supply. Now there is a good, let's say, prospect of the Russian army finally clearing out the supports, going to the stakes and then, well, moving further west in the Kurikov area and, possibly, bypassing Krasnogorovka from the west. Then we are moving with you directly into the territory, which is why this scandal is happening, and has happened, and is perfectly understandable. Well, now we'll get to it. Interesting shots continue to arrive from the Charles Reservoir. This is, in fact, the only highway that has the opportunity to use the Apu, which goes and bird, let's say, Kalinova. Karlovka is a small isthmus between the Charles Reservoirs and then Snobrodovka and fields here. This is the only area where you can throw some supplies here. This area is under full artillery control, and everything that comes in gradually, so to speak monotonously, is systematically destroyed. Here in these frames, we see with you, let's say, perhaps a warehouse in the impact of Krasnopol and detonation. And now we come today to the root and the main problem of the scandal that is already unfolding today. Perhaps not only between the O-Sinters, Hessenters, and other guys who are engaged in all this, let's say, geolocation, open source intelligence. Here it is, the big, the biggest scandal because of what? What's going on? We have repeatedly discussed with you that now there are, as it were, two truths, two stories in the Akratinsky direction. Absolutely one with the other unrelated, absolutely not like the other. We have some measures, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine which reports on this or that information there. And according to all sources on Earth, 
all the advanced fighters there and so on, so on, so on. We have information that the Russian army is almost storming Kalinov, right? That is, of course, I'm exaggerating now, of course, specifically to convey perhaps some kind of emotional context. But, of course, now, according to most sources on Earth, those who have connections with those who are fighting on the battlefield, receive information that the battle is being fought in the central part of Arkhangelsk, that the armed forces of Ukraine are retreating from this village. Of course, we do not refute this information. Of course, we are in no way saying that this is true or untrue. We are simply stating the messages, the messages that exist today in general, during a special military operation. And here's the situation like this. But if we are talking to you again and again, we are talking about geolocations, about frames that are specifically recorded where this or that action took place, then we see with you a completely different Okuratinsky bridgehead. In other words, this is, let's say, 90% of the routine. Yes, Solovyev's Bakhmutovka is all. That is, there is no talk about any ceramics, about anyone from Novokalinov, about anyone from Arkhangelsk, and even more so, about any fields between Novoalexandrovka and Arkhangelsk. And this is where the main scandal occurred, because there are very serious reliable sources that. Today, Ukrainians have published another video, strikes on the position of, let's say, the Russian army. And the extreme point of such strikes was recorded almost already in the northernmost part of the settlement of the next. Here, and on the basis of these shots, many geolocators, where it scouts, let's say, updated their maps, updated their, say, database, indicating that Ukrainian fighters are striking at the advanced positions of the Russian army. But some advanced positions, if according to most people, the Russian army has not just passed the queue a long time ago. The gardens are already under control, and the battles are already being fought in the central part, firm where the Ukrainian fighters are leaving their positions in a hurry. And this is where it happens. And here, if we go back with you to the same Krasnogorovka, to the same Novomikhailovka, then there is a small gap. And the difference in fact is in the territory actually confirmed, and the one that is confirmed only by a number of sources on Earth. There is a small difference there. That is, as we are now, we will go further with you to the same hours in the Yar, or besides Kislovka Kotlirovka. The difference is small. But on the Cheratinsky bridgehead, the difference is already significant. The difference between the control actually confirmed and the control that is being drawn is huge. And based on this, but all right, we, yes, those who are engaged in this history, we as a whole, regardless of the fact that a person who supports a story that, say, is based on sources on Earth, or a story that is confirmed by geolocations, we understand each other perfectly. And when those who say that Russian troops are already storming Arkhangelsk, and there they are landing near Kiev, in Poland they are already waiting for the Russian army to attack, we all understand perfectly well that yes, this is not confirmed by the video. There is no such thing that one of us does not understand that it is something there. Well, everyone understands this perfectly well, but everyone just has their own policy, their own strategy. The construction of these moments and coverage of the course of a special military operation. But there is a moment that there are people who watch both the first and the second, and there are people who do not take all the information. It is difficult to perceive it, perhaps it perceives incorrectly, after which serious conflicts occur. Serious misunderstandings between one and the second there, let's say, Katya is not those who create one second content, and those who listen to one and the second content. Therefore, what I'm asking you to do is always ask you to perceive two points of view, be sure to follow both one and the second. Follow both the confirmed video and geolocation progress. Follow the progress that is recorded from sources on the ground. Because there is truth in both. And the share of truth in both is quite high. And even more so if the information about the progress on the ground is confirmed as if by two camps there. Both by pro-Ukrainian cartographer scouts, so according to open sources, and pro-Russian. But in general, this situation is small, 
It's a remark so that you understand that you need to monitor everything and keep two. Two pictures, two in your head. This is very important. This gives a great understanding of exactly the gap. And of course, in this whole situation, I would probably like some more active one. Namely the pictures from the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, right? That is, yes, when they take the next item, they immediately add Burdick's information recently, they said on the news. According to the Semenovka of the Ministry of Defense, Bakhmutovka reported on full control. But again, neither Karamik, nor Novokolinova, nor Serestina, the settlements of the Ministry of Defense, are not affected at all. Even they are not mentioned. Yes, there is an improvement on the leading edge, but nothing more. But I wanted some more clarity, probably, perhaps, from the Ministry of Defense. Well, let's go back to Earth again, and we see geolocation, we see, again, we repeat. The gardens are under control according to pro-Ukrainian sources. According to all cartographers without geolocation on the ground, battles are being fought in the central part of Arkhangelsk, and, according to information, they are retreating from Arkhangelsk. That is, if this information is really confirmed, then tomorrow most cartographers will color this area as well. According to confirmed data of the Russian army, they have already approached the northern, let's say, extreme Osharatina. Battles have been waged for the last few square meters there. School, here's the pond. That is, if we talk about geolocations. That is, due to this lag, it is possible that there is no longer a secrecy stamp. And it is already possible to demonstrate as a whole, without worrying, without fearing for the lives of personnel. In the southern directions of Solovyev Bakhmutovka, pay attention to the high focus of the APU with the use of drones and artillery. These are extremely disturbing moments. In general, as we see with you, a large number of strikes on the Cheritinsky flower have been published over the past day. Strikes are carried out without stint, without regretting anything, and there is an extremely high probability that for sure the Apu has some idea or plan, perhaps how to strike at the Cheritinsky flower. In order to disrupt the offensive further on Arkhangelsk Novo Alexandrovka, then we are moving with you to the Yar direction where the assault actions of the Eastern Yar clock continue. During the night, information was received that the soldiers of the Russian army managed to re-enter the eastern part. Consolidation is underway and serious damage was inflicted, a serious defeat. The footage is published simply non-stop in the mode of firing multiple rocket launchers at the positions of the Apu. In the easternmost hours of the Yar, the losses are of course catastrophic. But here is one of those examples where there is no varnish because the front is very stable, static. It does not change here for a long time, and therefore, there is only one divergence in direction. These are the knocks of Golubkovsky. And the German four. The forest, right. That is, most of the cartographers of the Golubkovsky intro have already shown how the control over sources on Earth has been confirmed. And according to geolocations, history is still unclear here. The only difference, let's say, is between one. One and the second camp. That is why there are no questions here. Well, despite all this, of course, the Russian army continues to carry artillery strikes of very high intensity. Work is underway. It is reported that a landing party was transferred here today, that the landing party entered, and it was tonight. That there was, let's say, a dagger fight in fact between the SO Kraken, the armed forces of Ukraine, and the Russian special forces. Right? And how the fight ended is unclear. A day has passed, we are not getting any more information yet. Well, we'll see what happens next here. At the same time, the Russian army is constantly hitting infrastructure facilities. The goals are to suppress, destroy, stun, blind, and move on as far as possible. What have we been waiting for? We are moving with you to the Severs direction, where for what days in a row? The Russian army continues to carry out intensive strikes on Verknikamenskoy. Toss arrive. Let me remind you that in the near future, in fact, Russia will demonstrate and introduce a third Tosa, called Dragons into the field. It is reported that their strike distance can be up to 15 kilometers, and they say that it will be a very deadly, let's say, deadly weapon, firm which there is no longer even, let's say, a lock pick and some kind of salvation. Belogorov K-5, artillery strikes, perhaps in the near future, there will be attempts to start resuming the assaults of the landfill. The South Kapinski direction is silence, 
the central Kapinski direction, is silence. And more and more news comes from the Kislovsky direction, Kislovsko-Kotlirovsky. There's a varnish right here, yes. We remember that according to cartographers, control has already been established. And Russian fighters have already entered Kotlirovka and Kislovka, the eastern part has been captured. And the overall situation is developing extremely negative dynamics. And indeed, literally today he published information about entering Kotlirovka, and today, they published a video here is a Russian tank. Here in the lower left corner, strikes at advanced positions in court. That is, if we go back to the map, the Russian tank was located at this intersection, and firm here. It carried fire damage to the nearest buildings in Kotlirovka. That is, yes, today we received information about the call firm cartographers who build their news, let's say, on the sources of the earth. And today the video was published. In other words, the lack minimal map will be updated because there really is such information. And there is a similar story in the northwestern, say, outskirts of the central part of Kotlirovka. Most cartographers had this area either in the gray zone or it was already under Russian control there just a day ago. Two or three days ago, today there are already shots of how the Russian, let's say, stormtroopers are storming. That is everything. There are frames, the map is instantly updated. That is, there is no lag here. And it's kind of very easy to build and predict and understand everything that happens in general. But the Pecheritinsky bridgehead does not work like that. The northern direction, or if Army Group North, is in the area of responsibility. Today, a large number of geolocations have been destroyed over the past day. This information was confirmed, among other things, by the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. The antenna, radars were destroyed, and let's say, the Aresti air defense was destroyed in these frames of the destruction of, let's say, the A-50 counter-battery radar. A little further from Kharkov, the Aresti launcher system was destroyed. Perhaps it was recently installed, and struck at it with the use of the Iskander missile defense system, and two, very point-wise. And for sure two systems were destroyed, there are clear geolocations confirming the specific destruction. In other words, preparations are underway. Here are some more interesting shots. We can see with you in the village of Molodoy, again, another convoy of tanks that successfully transfers some armored vehicles to the north, or already from north to south, and here is a strike, an explosion and a fire, detonation and so on, so on, so on. Lancets also fly. In other words, in general, the northern direction to the area of responsibility of the army group north, let's say, is becoming more and more intense, and we should really expect an offensive in the near future. And similarly, in parallel with this offensive, the Ukrainian, let's say, deeper attempt to do something else on the territory of, let's say, settlements, which we outlined in the first part of the video, is likely to begin. For the main remaining other positions, another example of other information that we still have on history. There are small complaints of American fighters in general about the behavior of us policy in Ukraine. Let's say former veterans who are already taking actions in Ukraine on the side of, let's say, the Ukrainian army, report that the United States has forgotten how to wage war. We are used to fighting with partisans, with farmers, with shepherds, and in general, as if now in a high-intensity conflict. The United States does not have time, let's say, to catch up, catch up with military thought, which is developing from the Russian side, even possibly from Ukraine. It's all about patriots again. Very interesting information was received today from the deputy, the head of the main intelligence directorate of Skibitsky. Ukraine is on the verge. I don't see an opportunity for Kiev to win the war on the battlefield. Now it's harder than ever, such wars end only with negotiations. Of course, there are different ways to perceive this news. Some say that these are just attempts to knock out additional money from Western countries. Others report something, again, into the hands of manufacturers. In order to show more and more some kind of deplorability and a serious condition on the front line. But it's hard to say. On the one hand, the truth is really very harsh, and on the other, it may really be trying to get additional funding for Ukraine. According to the Russian news, something, in my opinion, was interesting today. NATO complains that Russia is threatening, 
waging a hybrid war against NATO, massive production of new drones. Yes, and today there is a plenary conference call of the Ministry of Defense, at which the losses of the armed forces of Ukraine were announced, 111,000 people, since the beginning of this year. According to my data, which I also conduct on the basis of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, 114,000 losses of the armed forces of Ukraine, 175, that is, a little more. Perhaps this meeting was held a few days ago, and only today, let's say, its results were published. In other words, the war is being waged, no one is going to stop the fighting, so we are watching.